Good morning. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of Pastor Grill Beach Community Church, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. I made a deal with Guillermo. If he could just wait till after Easter, we could disrobe. And so we're, uh, we're uh, in more casual uh, means this, this morning, uh, us and, and the choir. So, uh, But in whatever state of dress you are, uh, I invite you all, all who are able to let us stand and let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. Just a couple of announcements uh, before we begin. Uh, first of all, uh, next week we start a new uh, series uh, called The Faith of Jesus in a Pluralistic uh, World. Uh, many people uh, believe that when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes unto the Father except through me, that this means it's either uh, Jesus' way or the hell way, or there is no other uh, legitimate path. Uh, but uh, we're going to be exploring uh, his words in the context of uh, uh, other saying, what he said elsewhere uh, in Scripture, uh, both in the, in the Gospels and also what's, what we find in the Old Testament, to find that actually that assumption, uh, would be the, that would be the last uh, thing we'd expect Jesus to say, that he actually meant uh, a way of life that connects us to the divine, a way of life that is quite important. It's not just anything goes, but a way of life that connects us to the divine that can also be found in other faiths. And when you realize this, it doesn't cause you to jettison Christianity. It actually causes a deepening of your own uh, Christian faith and a, much, it's, and a much more joyful expression of it. So it's going to be a really interesting series. I highly recommend coming and uh, also deepening your experience. After worship, we will be uh, holding a, um, a, um, uh, a talk back uh, on Sunday mornings after, after the 11 o'clock uh, sir, oh, sir, sorry, I got all excited about my slides. Um, at 11, just from 11.15 to 11.45, just a simple 30-minute uh, sermon talk back if, you, if it opens up questions uh, or you want to explore uh, the, the topic of the sermon. And also we'll have a brown bag lunch group that's a bring your own uh, lunch group that happens on Wednesdays at noon here. And uh, you don't have to sign up, just show up. And uh, next Sunday also we'll ha be having the, the Philly Cheesesteak uh, fundraiser. So on that Sunday, we'll invite you to just uh, next Sunday, just grab a cheesesteak if you'd like to do the sermon t talk back. We'll go upstairs into the conference room and have, it, uh, have lunch uh, there. And uh, by the way, the tickets are available for this uh, important fundraiser um, out in the commons afterwards. So I hope you'll pick up your tickets for this uh, delicious uh, uh, Sunday. Uh, also coming up, uh, don't, don't forget, for the women's ministry, they're holding their annual spring luncheon, and so tickets are also available out, out the doors uh, after worship for that as well. That More information can be found in your bulletin. And uh, just a remote, uh, not that remote, early war, uh, 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 say the date, April 28th is our congregational meeting, and so we will be uh, looking at the preliminary budget that we'll be voting on in in June and also electing um, officers. So hope you'll join us for that. Uh, Guillermo, you have a couple of announcements as well. Good morning. So um, we are inviting everybody who's been visiting the church for some time to, to become a member. And becoming a member at sometimes sounds like, you know, we are being disingenuous if we have another church up north when we return to uh, a northern state to live you know, another five, seven months up there. Right? So for those people who spend the year between two churches um, and you're here for a good portion of the time, we, we invite you to, to join as well. Um, it's not just for people who are here year round, it's not just for people who are full-time residents, but also for people who may navigate uh, two states. 
And so that you don't feel you're two-timing your Northern Church, um, we have a category of membership called the associate member. So associate membership is one that allows you to, to feel that you're, you're honoring both churches and, and that while you're here, you're participating fully in the life of the church by being a member. So if you are interested in joining, we have two Sundays from now, uh, a membership uh, class that will be joining. And Donna Despain is right here. Donna, won't you please stand up? She is our star volunteer leading with members. Please see her if, if this is something you're interested in. Um, and now John Mason, friend of the church and longtime member is going to make an announcement on behalf of a concert that's about to happen. And good morning, I'm John Mason. I've been a member of the church since uh, 1988. I know a lot of you. I'm happy to announce that one week from tomorrow, a community band that I've been in for over 30 years, I play trumpet there, it's a 65-piece band. They're going to play an hour-long concert out in the Labyrinth from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And it's perfect that night because sunset's right at 8 o'clock, so you can see the show and see sunset at the same time. Bring your lawn chairs. It's a free concert. Uh, we're going to have a lot of great selections. We're playing some selections from West Side Story. We're playing some Dixieland jazz piece for a band and uh, a lot of good marches. So come on by and enjoy a really nice musical evening. Hope to see you all there. Thank you. Wonderful, thanks. And now I invite you to simply join me in taking a deep breath in. Let's let it out slowly as we clear away whatever obstacles we may have brought with us to experiencing the presence of God in this time of worship as we receive our opening music. Being a college professor for 30 years, I never miss a teachable moment. And I felt like perhaps this morning was one of them. You hear, hear our handbell choir ring about once a month throughout the season. However, this morning we're using chimes, which we use very seldom. And we own five octaves of the typical handbells. And since it's hard for you to see behind all of this, but we also own three octaves of the chimes. And they are aluminum where these are bronze, and they sound very different. So I hope you will enjoy our medley of Easter hymns that, this morning that combine both the chimes and the handbells.
please join me in our call to worship. God, arise. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. Too often we have been fools in word or deed. Still God searches for us day and night, seeking to draw us near. May God find us among the company of the righteous creating an and eternal God, God, who rolled away the stone, stone from the tomb. The tomb. Roll, Roll away the stones, stones that, that keep us from your path of discipleship. May, May we, we follow, follow the, the risen Christ, Christ to a to new a day, day full of new possibilities. possibilities. Amen. I don't think there's any children in the house at this moment to be excused. Miss Signy gets a chance to sit with us and stay in worship. Okay? And then also, um, there is a convertible Bentley in the parking lot that is running. Somebody has a getaway car. Okay? Uh, but so if you have a convertible Bentley, it is still on and running. The keys are inside, and it means that somebody just might drive away with it. There's Harry. Harry, so glad we told you. There you go. All right. All this time, I thought it was a gift for me. The gospel reading for uh, this morning is from the Gospel of John. It is given to us from the lectionary, and it is a passage that is familiar. It is that passage about doubting Thomas, Thomas needing proof in order to believe in the resurrected Jesus. And um, it is, uh, a, a, this is the abbreviated version of it that comes from John. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. 
Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Here ends this reading, and we ask for God's blessings upon it. They looked at him and saw a simple man, a carpenter with healing his hands. They saw him calm the sea and heal a dying man. They saw, but could they really understand? They could not. They but with healing in his hands. And could they really understand? They could not. They listened to the teaching that they heard and wondered at the mystery of his word. They wondered what he meant about a father's plan. They heard, but could they really understand? They could not. They could not. Though they tried. Could they really understand? They could not. They could not. So finally, upon a rugged cross, they killed the man who would not suffer last they took what willingly he gave he died but could they keep him in the grave they could not they could not praise God
of us were saying bravo on the inside. <laughs> truly, truly, Todd, bravo. Why don't you please pray with me? May the words from my mouth and meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace be with you on this day. When I was a young man, so young that many would say that I was still a child, I joined the United States Navy. And it was there where my world first expanded. And I met the wide diversity of people that live in our nation. And I befriended another young man by the name of Mueller. And I made the mistake early on of calling him Muller. And he corrected me. He said, no, the correct pronunciation is Mueller. But he didn't get angry because so often he also mispronounced my name. <laughs> we had that in common. So Mueller was the son of a farmer in a Midwestern state. He knew how to farm and hunt, but he had never seen the ocean. He knew from textbooks and movies that the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans did exist indeed, but he never had dipped his toes in ocean water. He never got a chance to experience the real thing until he joined the Navy. And when Mueller learned that I grew up in a Caribbean island and that I knew how to surf, he asked if I could take him to the beach and teach him how to stand on a surfboard and ride a wave. Now, although I consider myself to be a less than average surfer, to Mueller, who didn't even have the slightest clue as to what a riptide was, I was an avatar of the ocean. <laughs> so I agreed to teach him how to swim in the ocean and how to ride a wave. And I have to tell you that he swallowed several mouthfuls of ocean water, and he got a scorching sunburn on his pale skin. But he managed to ride enough waves that he could brag about it to uh, his friends back home. How many Mueller's are in our lives today? People who only know in concept that there is a God. People who have heard or read that there's this thing called Easter and a risen Christ. But like Mueller have never really dipped their toes in the waters of faith. How many people know of Easter only through an egg hunt or a special family dinner but they have no idea what it is to experience the Holy Spirit. We, the avatars of this faith, we know that there's no substitute for a God experience, for swimming in the waters of the divine. There's no doctrine, there's no amount of biblical reading that could make us a true believer like with an experience with God. We know that in the spectrum of our faith, there's miles, many, many miles between the concept and the actual living of the faith. And that is why I, early on, our faith was called the way. It was a path that people walked, that we walk. And in, along that path, somewhere along the way, we're transformed into the people of God. We are in the season of Easter, which lasts 50 days until Pentecost Sunday. And in this season, we celebrate the risen Christ and incorporate the meaning of the risen Christ into our lives. I recognize that for many people, that's a stretch. They kind of look at this and they go, I don't know what to think. Because there are many Thomases I, too, was a Thomas, requiring an experience with the divine in order to believe. And there are many Mueller's, people who need a mentor, people who need to guide them along the way. 
That's the underlying goal for me as a pastor and for the church as well, to provide the path for people to experience the Holy Spirit, to provide an opportunity for them to figure out when the Holy Spirit has brushed up against them and to mentor people along this path. Contrary to popular belief, we are not Christmas Christians. We are Easter Christians. Baby Jesus may be a lot cuter than a suffering Jesus on the cross, but Easter is the focus of our faith. Historically, it was Easter that provided for those early followers the meaning, the message that transformed entire communities and eventually transformed the world. In the first and second and third century of the common era, followers of the way lived in these small, tight-knit communities. And they had a disciplined understanding of the faith. And they kept each other accountable to it. And they really made an effort to love their neighbors, even though many of their neighbors wanted to persecute them. And eventually, people recognized that there was something attractive to this faith, that there was something about the risen Christ that would give them meaning. And those people, they dipped their toes in those waters, and they became followers of the way. And over the course of two and a half centuries, the faith grew, and it reached the ruling classes, the people with money and power, until one day, in the year 313 of the Common Era, Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. And everything changed. Christianity took on a whole new focus. But let's fast forward 17 centuries to our reality today. We are the descendants of those early followers of the way. We recognize that we too are on a path to experience the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We have moved from knowing it as a concept to becoming people who practice it and possibly avatars of the faith. We seek better ways to experience and interpret the Holy Spirit. We are Easter Christians, and with that, comes a vision of the big picture. We understand the teachings and actions that led to the crucifixion of Jesus. We know that Jesus taught and he promoted a new version of God that threatened the power and the authority of the temple in first century Jerusalem. This concept that the love and grace of God is available to all people regardless of who they are and where they might be in life's journey, regardless of their ability or willingness to follow the laws of Moses, that God still loved each and every one of them. Back in that day, it was heretical. It was radical. It was blasphemous, punishable by death. More than wanting to kill Jesus, the religious leaders of that time wanted to kill the concept, stop it dead in its tracks before it would become practice. And then Easter happened. On the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. He came out of that tomb. And in just about every single scripture, that's describing that moment, they say, and our eyes were opened. Our eyes were opened, now we understand. Now we get it. We know what he meant when he said, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Now that we have a risen Christ, we understand why Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. You see, Easter is the big awakening. It's the big aha. We get the big picture, and it all makes sense. There's this integration between the life of Jesus and what he taught and what he lived, and then the 
risen Christ. There was Jesus who went with his disciples ministering and giving parables and trying to tell people this new image of God. And then there's the Christ that emerged out of the tomb. There's this integrity about it all. But we don't see it until Easter happens. And then at that moment, we become joyful. Joyful not just for all the big things that are happening in our lives, but also with the smaller blessings. These smaller blessings of life because there we see how God and the Spirit of God is operating with us. A child's innocence. A gentle hand that's placed over our own. The warm cup of tea on a cold night. The beautiful voice of a soloist. The sunrise and the sunset over glassy skies. But it's also Easter that gives us another trait, that gives us another layer that may not have been there before. See, Easter removes something, it takes away that shield that we put between us and the world. It softens our heart, makes us a bit more vulnerable. And the injustices of the world, they hurt more. We grieve in ways that we may not have grieved before because apathy is gone. Indifference is no longer there. And so when we see images of the injustices in the world, just like the early followers, Easter, beckons us to make those wrongs right. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was an Easter Christian, and he held on to the hope and promise of the risen Christ to undo a society that had woven injustice into its every fabric. And it's because of Easter that he believed that the arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And so, as Easter Christians, we fight with righteous anger for justice to prevail, even though the fabric of our society glorifies violence and greed. We call for an end to war and to the economies that benefit from it. We call for peace in Gaza, but more importantly, we call for peace in our own hearts, peace with our neighbors, our coworkers, our brothers and sisters. I may not be able to do anything about Prime Minister Netanyahu and the anger that he has in his heart, but the risen Christ calls me to reconcile the anger in my own heart and to seek peace with my neighbor. Because I just can't feel the joy of Easter if I'm holding on to resentment. I cannot feel the joy of the risen Christ if I'm constantly lamenting what I have lost and how I have been wronged. To be an Easter Christian is to have a new perspective, a new hope, and to become the people who stop lamenting what is lost and instead become the people who look forward to all that we could do. To stop being the people who are always looking back at how good it used to be, and now looking forward to become the people to see what a difference we can make in the world and all that can be gained from it. It was on August 8th of last year that wildfires destroyed the town of Lahaina on the island of Maui. And in the months that followed, there was much anger over the mismanagement and the governmental failures that in indirect ways spread those fires. And those angers were justified. That grief was justified. All of it was justified. Months later, I read about an interview of a law of a lifelong resident in Lahaina, a woman by the name of Ululani. 
Ululani had to jump over the seawall to escape the fire. Ululani jumped over that seawall and had to hold on to a wall full of barnacles. And the ground beneath her was filled of sharp rocks. She cut herself, her hands, her feet, her skin in so many different places. But she urged people to jump over the seawall and escape that fire and save their lives. And Ululani states that her journey from anger and grief to hope and joy is a work in progress. She's not there yet, but she knows that she'll get there one day. And she talks about being on this path that will be very healing in her heart. And she talks about walking with the risen Christ. That's an image for you. And I'm going to quote her now. I don't want to paraphrase these words because, well, they deserved to be quoted. Ululani then said to the interviewer, Jesus didn't rise on the third day so that I could hold on to the ashes of what I lost. No. Jesus came out of that tomb so that I might know new life. New life for me, for my family, and for all of Lahaina. These are powerful words. Consider those words alongside the losses that you have experienced. Consider those words alongside the group that you might belong to that has loss as part of their identity. I speak to you now as a Cuban or as son of exiled Cubans to be exact. And the many, many decades that I heard my parents and that generation grieve all that they lost and the anger and the resentment that they had towards all the Castro supporters that pushed them out of the island. And in time, I saw how some of them eventually became joyful people, became people that were able to celebrate Easter. But I also got to see in a painful way some other relatives that weren't able to. And I will tell you that the difference between one and the other, people that I know deep well in my heart, is that for those who were still angry till the day they died, Easter was just a concept. Easter was not something real. But for my mother and so many others, that on this day, rejoicing Easter, the risen Christ is very much alive with them. So I have to ask a question for you to ponder. Are we holding on to ashes that, of something that we lost? Are we holding on to a past that will no longer ever, ever be real? Easter is the call for us to open up our eyes. Easter is the call for us to see that there is a new life, a new life that could only happen if we'd let go and we release those ashes that keep us from experiencing the joy and the love of Easter. To see a new life full of new opportunities to enjoy the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Savior. And then at that moment, just like the scriptures described, our eyes will be opened. And we will be able to see fresh, as if it were just new, that Easter is everywhere. We will see how Jesus became the Christ. And we will know that it's no longer a concept. It's a force of nature. Easter is that cycle of death and rebirth that is just so prevalent all around us. It's the spinning of the Milky Way galaxy. It's the cosmic Christ that the Gospel of John described in its opening chapter. It's the child that Jesus held in his arms. It's the Samaritan woman by the well 
who understood that her sins were forgiven. And it's us, the people of Pasigro Beach Community Church, United Church of Christ, the people in these pews and that are part of this community, we are aware that we are part of a new dawn, full of new possibilities and new opportunities for us to live our faith. Can you see it? Open your eyes. Easter is everywhere. Amen. And now I'm going to invite you to please rise as you're able and let us sing an Easter song. The words are printed in the bulletin and are up on the screen. may be seated. Guillermo said some, made some very, very poignant, uh, uh, had some very poignant insights in his sermon. One of them that really sticks with, with me is that the woman who uh, left her house behind in ashes and, uh, you know, could have hold, held on to that loss and acknowledged it was a, a process. It's still a process, but that deep acknowledgement that Jesus did not rise on the third day so that she could hang on to the ashes of her loss, but rather left that empty tomb so that she could have new life. And uh, certainly that insight is uh, very much encapsulated in this meal in which Jesus took bread on a night of betrayal and desertion and broke the bread saying, my friends, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took wine and he blessed it. And he called it the cup of the new covenant, the cup of our lasting life. Any time that we drink from this cup, we do it in remembrance of him. We're going to invite you uh, forward to take a piece of bread and uh, dip it into the cup or take a uh, communion packet. And uh, as you come forward, maybe uh, I invite you to think about uh, some ashes that you're still clinging to, that Christ invites you to let go of. Just make a fist, and as you stand to come forward, let it go and be filled. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us enjoy the feast. How beautiful 
prayer. <clears throat> Most holy God, Easter has come and gone, and wait a minute, what did we just pray? Easter has come and gone? No, truly, if Christ has vacated that grave and exists now as the Holy Spirit, Easter has come and Easter still is. Easter exists wherever a heart is open to the spirit of the living Christ. Holy Spirit, Easter has come and this has made all things new. Easter has come, so we let go of the ashes that we keep clinging to so hard. Those ashes we are almost afraid to let go of because they have become part of our identity, this resentment, this loss. Easter has come, so we let them go. And we leave them behind. And we walk anew as new creations not only having received the gift of grace and love that has come to us in Christ, but giving it away as freely as we have received it. Holy God, recognizing that this is all a process and that we are still in process, help us this coming week to identify those places in our lives, those burdens that we have, that we are being invited to let go of, and leave behind. And help us to see those avenues of grace that we are invited to step into, ways that we can be of help to a person who's hurting, ways that we can forgive the sins of another, ways that we can continue to accept our own forgiveness and continue to give it away. Holy God, we approach you now in the silence of our hearts, offering those prayers between, that exist simply between us and you. All these things we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we have freely received, and uh, as Christians, we also know that receiving is an invitation to freely give as well. Freely receive grace, freely give grace, freely receive blessings, freely give blessings. We do so in many ways through Uh, uh, helping out, volunteering our time, uh, taking out our time and talents that we've received, that we have, uh, and giving them away to others, putting them into service of Christ in in the world. Uh, We're given material possessions in abundance, and we we know that some of those material possessions uh, no longer have a, a lot of meaning to us. Maybe they've become burdens to us, and we work to find ways that they can be placed in the hands of others for whom uh, that may be an act of grace. Uh, maybe even just simply taking them to our own thrift stop, shop uh, and allowing them uh, to be uh, reused and uh, in new ways. And we also uh, practice giving and receiving through our financial uh, blessings, uh, giving them away in the world and also to this, this church that assure the present and future ministries of Pasig Grove Beach Community Church. You, may, you are aware that we um, are still collecting pledges, so if you have uh, not turned in a pledge, uh, the pledge uh, stewardship 
committee would be very grateful if you would pick up a card on the way out um, and, and fill it out today, if possible. Um, otherwise, uh, very soon, we're trying to bring the, our stewardship time to a close and, and make a very happy announcement uh, to the congregation. So uh, please get your stewardship pledges in uh, as soon as you're able as well. But in any, any way that you um, feel so moved, we appreciate your, your giving. And now I invite you to join me in uh, standing, all who are able, and let us sing our closing song. Oh, 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 oh. no, no, that's right. You're right. Yeah, okay. You're right. You're yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> Go for it. Come on up. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's a benediction after. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, sing it first. And we'll do the benediction after. We are a family whose hearts are blazing. Let's raise our candles, light up the sky. Pray to our Father, in the name of Jesus, make us a beacon in darkest time. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the helpless. Depart from this place knowing that the Easter message is more than just a story in the Bible, that it's more than just a history that the church recites. May we depart from this place knowing that Easter is alive, that it is alive in this church, among us, and within us, knowing that the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with each and every one of us. Go now in peace. Amen. Amen.